Hey guys, how's it going? Companion here. So as some of you guys know, I'm in the process of building a pretty sweet computer. You know, nothing too, too crazy, but when it comes to building computers, I like the high, but not the highest end. And I want to show you guys the parts that I chose, uh, why I chose them, and in general, how this process works. So I've been a computer technician for about two years before I did the streaming thing, so this stuff is pretty easy for me. And I've done it enough that I'm probably going to leave out a few important things in this video, but you guys will get some of the idea, and I'm sure some of you guys just in it for the ride, just curious to see the stuffs. And well, you'll get to see just that. So to get started, I'm going to show you guys all the stuff that um, I pretty much ordered. And I'll go into why and how it all works together and kind of the stuff that you need to look for when you uh, are building a system. And I guess before we get started, the pretty important thing is that the very basics, you know that it all works together. You know that this is compatible with that. And it usually is because, well, the companies have made it very easy so that, well, you tend to not fuck this up too much. All right, so I got the um, i7 4770K, I think it is. Yep, overclock this guy if I want, but I've heard that uh, summers in Greece are pretty hot, so maybe not so much, or at least not during that. And I went with this processor because it's new. I've learned that it's not quite as powerful as the 3770K, which is the predecessor, but it's pretty much the same thing, and it's new. So you gotta get the new stuff because you get support, you get the new goodies, you get the new features, which I'm not exactly sure what they are, but, well, I need a powerful processor because I stream and I do other things like render video, and that's what it requires. Um, Intel processors are just the way to go. They're pretty expensive sometimes, but hey, that's just what you get. So one thing that you don't get with an Intel processor is a heatsink. I like the Hyper 212 because um, it's just something that's very simple. I've used it before, and yeah, there's probably better heatsinks, but that thing costs practically nothing compared to a lot of the ones that are in the same range about how how well they cool a CPU. And I like always getting a aftermarket CPU uh, heatsink because. Well, the stock one that you get for free is pretty much the cheapest thing they could possibly include that will cool the CPU adequately. And while that's sometimes okay, if you're buying a processor that's not, you know, too high end, um, you know, you're probably not going to run it up that hot anyway. So, yeah, it's fine if you don't, but, well, I guess in some way this is kind of a job, so we got to take it seriously. All right, so motherboard, I went with... Uh, Maximum six, Maximum 6, it's all pretty and stuff. I don't know if you guys can see that. Whoa, motherboard. So, prettiness and shit is a pretty nice plus. There's a lot of features that go into a motherboard, and a lot of the really cheap ones are just fine. But, for some reason, uh, being a technician, I've used a lot of the Asus boards, and a lot of the high-end Asus boards uh, have pretty good reliability. In terms of motherboards, some of them fail a lot more than others, and I'm just happy with how these work. I'm happy knowing I have features I don't understand, so one day when I do understand them, I'll have them at my fingertips. And there's a, there's a few other things that uh, I don't yet have, which is why this is not a computer building video, it's a computer like part video. So HyperX is supposed, is, they are sending me uh, a few parts that I'm using for the system, they're the ones that are outlined as the sponsored ones. So I have the HyperX uh, 2x8 memory sticks. Uh, they go to 1866 with this particular model, but uh, when it comes to memory, I always just run it uh, 1600 999. And um, I've realized that the speed on memory really doesn't play much of an impact on anything. And the CPU, I've learned that is very happy when you have very loose settings on your memory. So go with that. And uh, this particular HyperX memory has uh, I think the second profile in the uh, XMP, just that. The good stuff, the easy stuff, the 1600. So I'm pretty happy with that. And that should be coming in once I come back from flight night, which is going to be about a week from now. That's when you'll see the build video. Next piece, <coughs> video card, 770. Also went with Asus because, well, it has a lot of the same colors. The Kingston memory that, uh, the Kingston HyperX memory that I'm getting is going to be blue because I like the blue, but I picked it up before I made the color, se color scheme for this system. So it's not going to match very well, but uh, they're going to send me the new memory line, the HyperX Fury, 
and I'll probably pick the red. So we're going to have the red and black motherboard with the red and black video card, the red memory, and white. Yeah, well that, that'll come later. But color scheme is not really a big thing. It's just nice. I needed to get a pretty powerful video card. I never buy the highest end of video card. The 770 is among the high ends. From what I've seen on reviews, I go to techpowerup.com for video card reviews and they have the benchmarks and you can see how well the video cards do compared to their price point. So the 770 was about it. I went to see where I was going to buy it, kind of the price ranges and you know it seemed pretty in line with the website. So yeah, good stuff. You get good video cards if you need them, but you never get the best. If you want like an extremely good setup, you just get a few of the almost best ones, but the premium that you pay for getting the best video card out there is usually um, not worth it at all. Next on the list we got uh, hard drives or SSDs. So I'm going to have, I always have a RAID 1 setup for the primary files, the games, the operating system, and I have at least one secondary drive. In this case I have one, but you know I might add more later to where um, you know you just put video files and you know records and just the backup stuff the really big files that you don't use very frequently and the primary stuff recently i mean in the last you know four or five years i've only used uh, ssds for the primary stuff because they just rock and the more recent systems and including this one i'm going to be using two ssds in raid one and it's just kind of peace of mind that if something happens, it's not really that big of a deal. You're not going to lose the data. You don't have that much of a headache to, uh, you know, get the system up and going. Ultimately, I like having a lot of reliability with my systems, and that comes over performance. And it's really not too big of a deal. Um, when it comes to SSDs, if you have them in RAID 1 or RAID 0, sometimes it doesn't even make a difference. The motherboard doubles the speed. I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be the case with this motherboard, but we'll see when the time comes. So I'm basically going to have 240 gigs for all the operating systems and games and all that stuff that I want. And I've survived on 120, so this is going to be quite a pleasure. And yay for HyperX for giving me the free stuffs because, well, getting it for free is much better than paying for it. All right. So this is the other hard drive. I always pick Western Digital Black because, um, well, in my experience, those don't fail. And, well, all the other ones do. So I just get that one. My experience, there are good reviews for all these hard drives, uh, but you know, when it comes to your own system, you kind of get what you want. This is a DVD player. It's black. And this one doesn't have a logo. I think it's a Samsung one. Yep. It's better to have one without a logo, because there's less stuff to look at. Next item, power supply. So there is something to know with power supplies that you kind of know how much your system, you, you need to know how much your system uses. And there's two primary components that dictate this. There's the video card, and then there's the processor. And everything else is practically nothing. So the way you make your calculation is, you type it in Google, you see the peak power, um, power draw for your processor, you see the peak power draw for your video card. You can use techpowerup.com for the video card stuff because that's included among all the you know, value stuff and all the price ranges and all that. And you take that number and you double it, and that's the power supply that you buy because uh, the power supply is going to be most efficient when it's at about the 50% range, and the efficiency includes uh, how efficient the power going from your outlet to your components is going to be, and secondly, how clean the power is going to be. And both of these factors tend to peak up about the halfway point on the power supply. And while you don't use the peak performance of your video card and your CPU, the other components in your system are usually going to make up for this difference to where you're in that range. So with my system, I got a 650. With power supplies, it's really important that you go for reviews and you go for just one that people regard as good. There's a lot of stuff that goes in the power supplies and goes to all the components. And um, <clears throat> it's kind of a lot to go through. Like I don't even know most of this stuff. but. I know that the really cheap power supplies and even the pretty cheap ones, uh, they, will, they will dictate the life of the other components in your system. So if you get a really shit power supply, it's not that the power supply will break, it's that the power supply 
will give shitty power to your motherboard, so components on your motherboard will start, start failing. So I'm a pretty big advocate in buying a very high quality power supply. And these days, they're not even that expensive. I got a Fractal just because it was uh, the one that was available. The reviews are really good. It's uh, 80 plus gold. It's not modular, but, well, I'm pretty good with uh, the cable management anyway. So just went with that. Availability is a big thing. For the case, I went with the Fractal R4. It's a case that wasn't available at the computer shop that I worked. We didn't have Fractal products, and a lot of people said they were really cool and stuff. So I went ahead and checked it out. I'll throw you guys up uh, a link if you want to check the, the description and see what it's like, and you see all the angles, and you can see that the reviews are really good. And uh, when you look up a case, you want to know how many fans are included. Uh, there's always more spots for fans than are included in the case, and in this particular one, the reviews said that the fans that come with the case are a piece of shit. So what I went ahead and did is um, got more fans. So when uh, when you look up how many and which type of fans you want to get, you may have to do some looking around. Not all this information is available on websites like Newegg. Sometimes you have to go on the manufacturer website. But eventually, you figure out what's going on. And in this particular case, the case has room for many 140 millimeter fans. Uh, but my idea is that I'm going to put one in the back as um, an exhaust and two in the front. And I'm doing this because, um, well, the power supply has a 140 that's acting as an exhaust as well. So I have two 140s in and two 140s out. And that's pretty close to as good as it's going to get. And the idea is that Apparently there's a fan controller on this case that controls up to three fans. So I'm going to hook up these three 140 fans to that fan controller. And I got three of these Corsair ones. Uh, the reviews are really good and they were available. So I got them. Uh, the idea is that I want a really quiet case and I got the 120s as well. I got three of those for the case, two of these for the CPU heatsink, the Hyper 212 Evo. The fan that comes with that is also a piece of shit. So the idea is that you can hook up the CPU heatsink fans to the motherboard and that's kind of like a dynamic fan controller uh, that ranges based on how hot your CPU is and you don't really want to mess with fan controllers with your CPU fans. So I'm going to have consistent type of fans throughout the system. They're all going to be glowy white. The case is black and white and then we got the, the red and the black theme for all the other components and it's all tucked away very nicely uh, behind completely black panels which prevent you from seeing anything. But the idea is that the inside, when you take the panel off, is going to look amazing. And you guys will get to see just this when I build the system. So I went over a lot of the different things that uh, go into each of the different components when you buy them, when you put them together. But the main thing that you guys really need to understand is that when, you, when you're looking at components, um, knowing what to get is almost always going to be a factor of reviews. Because if it's, if it's well known as something good, it's going to continue to be that way unless it changes. And sometimes it changes and you'll tell them the reviews. I've known certain memories from certain companies to be like some of the best stuff ever. And then they make it all crap all of a sudden and the reviews become all crap all of a sudden. So what you really need to do is uh, you go to West, they have a lot of products, they have a lot of reviews. I use exclusively Newegg for this. I actually don't purchase pretty much anything from Newegg. But they act as a very good service to tell me what's good to buy. And, you know, everything that I, I had on my shopping list that I ended up getting was uh, very well rated on Newegg. And I'd assume other sites as well to the point where, you know, you'd, you'd look up just a video card. Uh, and then you look based on the best reviews and you'd see, you know, the video card that I picked among those. So knowing what's good really comes down from the feedback of others. Uh, I try to stay away from the really new products that don't have very many reviews. And, you know, the other aspects, yeah, there's the building of systems. And if you don't know how to do that, you should probably, uh, you know, get a friend or get whoever you're buying the components off of to do that service for you. But it's a, it's a pretty awesome experience. The other thing that I really advocate for is buying the components locally. So the way it works is... Um, the wholesaler ships the components to like the stores and they do this through like a truck and a lot of stuff happens in that in that process so sometimes the stuff gets damaged and if you get it ordered to your house there's going to be like a UPS guy or something who's going to handle the package going to dump it in his truck 
and put it on your doorstep. And you know, this type of stuff has an effect on on a lot of products, sensitive stuff like motherboards, like hard drives. It's just better to find a store near you and you just order everything from that. It's one less shipment that the products have to survive through. And this is especially true if you're buying an entire system. There are certain companies out there that sell systems as a whole and they ship them to you. And the problem is that when you ship a whole system, it's not as if you're buying each individual part and they're all, you know, bubbled up and, you know, packed up very nicely. It's that um, they're as a system and when the video card is plugged into the motherboard, with as much strapping as you can put on it, eventually, you know, it's going to wiggle a little bit, it's going to get damaged. And reliability is a big thing for me, the biggest one. And the best way to make sure that you get the most out of uh, the components that you get in terms of this factor is just buy them locally. So keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in about a week with this computer action. And you guys get to see what, it, what goes into building it. It's nothing too crazy, but I'm excited to do it. And hopefully you guys get that feeling as well. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. So should be it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.